day 26 in Nepal. Dol to Machermo, 4,200 meters to 4,470 meters. Woke up at 4,200 meters and feel fine. Hopeful for the day. The giants are finally starting to appear. Just a nice shot of your ass. Thank you. We're proud of that ass. Well, good morning, everybody. It's the beginning of day six. Woke up this morning, altitude 4,200. There or thereabouts, surprisingly, feel fine, 100%. The reason that I'm wearing this get up is because the trails here are so dusty. Look at this, I don't know if it's gonna pick up on the camera. See that, it's like talcum powder and you're breathing all of that in. So, today's hike, fairly short five kilometers but what you soon learn on these treks is sort of days aren't measured in kilometers traveled they're measured in altitude gained so we're going up to about 4006 4007 something like that and then we're gonna have a rest day we are leaving what I would describe as the foothills so all of these black what, can you see the dust? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So we're leaving the black granite peaks and we are heading, hopefully, into the terrain that you would expect from hiking in the Himalayas. 8,000 foot giants, or 8,000 meter giants, my apologies. 8,000 meter giants covered in snow. That's what I'm looking forward to. Day six and we're almost there. Trekking with amazing view of Choyu. Excited to shoot sunset. Went from feeling good to feeling funny very quickly. It's funny, altitude's funny. I don't feel unwell, but I am definitely not right. I'm exhausted. It's just... I don't really know how to describe it. I'm probably fine. It's probably because I've laid down in my sleeping bag to keep warm because it's freezing. But I have half an hour, I've got to pack my stuff because we're going for another hike about 100 meters uphill for sunset. It's not gonna be easy, nothing has been easy for the past two days. Ugh. But it's always worth it. And on these trips, every day you get stronger and stronger. That I need to remember. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. now towering above our little village where we're staying and we're on a ridge line and from here here we have a view of Choyu which is the sixth highest mountain in the world so I'm gonna get set up get settled down out of the wind drink some water and wait for the light
Fuji X-T3 malfunctioned. <laughs> okay, so I'm having some problems here with the Fuji X-T3 and my screen has inexplicably just stopped working. It will preview the images, so I can press play and see the images and I can see everything through the viewfinder, but I can't get live view on the screen. I didn't touch anything, it just happened. So I tried turning it on and off again. Now I'm gonna try taking out the battery and putting it back in. Nope, the screen's still dead. Oh man, no. that is gonna cause so many problems. Nothing, nothing. Should have brought my cannon. I knew I should have brought my cannon. Hello, <laughs> hello. Hands off, hands oh, off. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry I left you. Okay, Careful, I'm doing a long exposure here. Are you? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> After putting on a few more layers to keep the cold at bay, it was time to get back down to some photography. The screen on the Fuji fired up again, and we'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. But for now, the light was changing and the scene in front of us was beginning to unfold. We have a lovely bit of last light remaining on the peak. That is a nice bit of interest, but it's not enough interest to hold the composition that I had earlier of the entire mountain range. So we've gone vertical and we have this riverbed winding through the valley below us that leads you up to that peak and up to the area of interest where the light is on the peak. So that's what I'm going for. Now I'm just going to drop in a medium edge filter just to pull down the sky. Just like this. So this is really nice now. I'm very, very tight in. I'm at 55 mil and it's a very tight shot, but I don't want to change lenses because I'd have to go to the long end of the kit lens and the quality is just not there. So instead I'm going to keep my composition tight, make sure my framing is perfect so I don't have to do any cropping. And then we have quite a nice image. Not what I expected to shoot, but still, nice nonetheless and it works just 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 nice with the light hitting the peak so yeah i'll get this shot and then uh, i think it'll be time to go down get some hot tea and uh hot food <laughs> Fuji X-T3 malfunctioned. <laughs> Emailed retailer for a refund. Fuji X-T3 did not malfunction. User error. I'm an idiot. I know. I know. I made a mistake. And I would like to formally apologize to Fujifilm Corporation and all the lo loyal Fujifilm fans. Because I made a mistake. But do you know what? Do you know what makes a man a man? Owning up to that mistake. So, just before the image that you have just seen, I was complaining that my screen and camera was malfunctioning. But it's not, it wasn't. I hold my hands up, it was user error. And uh, after a late night last night and browsing the forums and reading the manual, which you should all do. <laughs> I very quickly realized that, I don't know if you can see this, but on the side of my camera, right next to the shutter speed dial, is a button. That button says view mode. That button toggles between live view, EVF, you know, one or the other. So obviously, whilst dialing in my shutter speed, I have knocked the view mode button, which has disabled my screen. I didn't know I'd done that. I assumed, because I'm so arrogant, <laughs> that it was the uh, the faulty camera, not the faulty idiot. I must say though, I was at 4,600 meters, so my brain wasn't quite operational. Uh, so yeah, user error, the Fuji, 100%, can't complain. So I apologize and I hope you can forgive me. But for now, I don't know if you can see the valley over my shoulder, I don't know if it's coming out, but we are exploring this beautiful valley, looking for compositions to either shoot now actually, because it's quite nice, we have a little flutter of snow, there's lots of cloud, but really we're here exploring for a sunrise shoot tomorrow morning, so let's go and see what we see in this fantastic valley here in the Himalaya in Nepal. <laughs> So 
So the scouting mission this afternoon has been more than a success. It's been phenomenal. This area is fantastic. The, there's numerous rivers running down this valley. Some are open water with cascades. Some are frozen with ice patterns and textures. And I mean, look at the backdrop. It's just phenomenal. If anything, there's too much to shoot. We're trying to narrow it down, make a decision so that in the morning when it's dark, cold, we're tired, we have a good idea of where we want to go and what we want to shoot. Because watching this from your cozy living room at home, I'm sure you're thinking, why is this guy huffing and puffing? But trust me, we are here at about 4,600 meters and every step takes it out of you. So just talking to you now, you can see that I'm breathless and it probably makes you a bit uncomfortable. Well, imagine how I feel, <laughs> but it's worth it for this. I'm not gonna film anymore today. This is a rest day, I've got to chill out. So I will see you guys first thing tomorrow morning and it'll be interesting to see how this scene looks. I think, hopefully, it's gonna be fantastic. Day eight, woke up for 5.45 a.m. sunrise. Nice light, but hoped for better. Felt very rushed as group was spread out. Everyone happy, and I got a nice shot, which I scouted the previous day. Well, good morning, everybody. And it's been a hectic morning, so I haven't done any recording really. Uh, I've been working with everybody, make sure everyone's happy, getting their shots while the light's good. And actually, the light's been good all morning, and it's good right now, if you can see over my shoulder there. So I'm slowly, <laughs> uh, trying not to pass out, slowly walking to a composition that I found yesterday. I'm gonna show you the shot that I took yesterday on my scouting or our scouting session. I shot it handheld, fully auto, one of many compositions. It was the one I was most happy with. It's clean, it's simple, it's my kind of image. And now I've returned this morning in that low ambient light to reshoot it. And we'll see how different things look from mid afternoon to early morning. So here we are. Very simple, it's an area of turf and grass with these frozen puddles that create this. Oh, we've got light, oh God, hang on. All right, I'm gonna put you down. Hopefully the battery will last. All right, stay there. So, fantastic area of turf with, with channels of white ice and islands of grass just giving nice areas of interest. And I'm glad, glad that I shot this yesterday because I'd never have found this in the dark this morning. That's why scouting is so important. F9, no filters, just early morning light. I did take a shot earlier, so I have one in the bank, but now the light's hitting, it'd be nice to see if this one is any better. And there we go, it's been a fantastic morning. It's been a busy morning, it's been a cold morning, but the scouting session yesterday helped so much because it allowed me to find this comp, it allowed everyone else to find their comps. And yeah, really happy right now. And even happier knowing that I've got a nice image and I get to go back for a nice hot breakfast. But stay with me because the real challenge of this trek so far is today. This is where it really begins. We go even higher and we get even more epic views. All right, breakfast time. <laughs> So this is the image that you just saw me capture after the sun had risen, but I did allude to an earlier photograph that I took before the sun had risen and before I was able to do any filming. And that photograph, as I suspected at the time, is the better, in my opinion anyway, is the better image of the two as the whole scene is glowing in the ambient pre-sunrise light.
So after the morning's photo shoot, it was time to eat breakfast, pack our bags, and then continue on with our hike towards Gokyo, which sits at 4,800 meters, almost 16,000 feet. And this would be the biggest challenge of the trek so far. Okay, probably halfway to Gokyo. Very cold, I'm stopping to layer up. Although the sun's shining, once you get over 4,000 meters, it, it doesn't get above freezing. And at night time drops down to minus 10. And there's a wind chill, this wind's rushing through the valley. It is freezing cold. I mean, I'm hiking, fully layered up. I've got thermal base layers, windproof fleece lined trousers, mid layer, down jacket, woolly hat, gloves, bitterly cold and at altitude your body is working so hard that it's just so difficult to keep warm like down at sea level not a problem go for a little jog you know speed up wear extra clothes but up here it's just brutal Okay, so after a few hours made it to Gokyo and that beast of a hill there is Gokyo Ri, which we hope to climb for sunset, but not tonight. For today, we stay local, we rest because that was horrendous. I had ups, I had downs. I felt terrible, I felt great. Oh, but what a view, what a place. Looking forward to spending a couple of days here. Once we had arrived in Gokyo, I knew immediately that something wasn't right. I felt exhausted in a way which I'd never experienced before. I sat and watched my friends climb Gokyo Ri, the first big peak of the trek, knowing that I was missing out on some of the best views so far. The next morning, I forced myself out of bed for a sunrise shoot, but it's clear from this footage that you're about to see that I am not coping well with the altitude. So it's uh, the morning. So it's the morning of day 10 on the hike, on the trek. It's probably the best morning we've had. Snow, fresh covering of snow, amazing views to chore you, you <laughs> chore you. And it's just breathtaking. This is also the worst I've felt since being on the trail. I feel unbelievably bad. So I'm not gonna do any filming. I'm just gonna take some pictures and end the video with any images from this morning. My apologies. Hopefully, the next video you see, I'll have perked up somewhat. All right. So that was that. I took only one photograph and walked back to the lodge before the sun had even risen. I was feeling depressed and like I'd let myself down and everyone else who had woke early for sunrise that morning. Here's the image that I captured from arguably my darkest ever moment in photography. Mm -hmm. 